The moment I laid eyes on him, I just knew right off the bat this was going to be an interesting case. I started losing sleep. I was becoming weaker and weaker. I've never seen a case like this in, in my practice. As a diagnostician of dermatology, I specialize in decoding the mysteries of rare and complex skin conditions. A skin finding may actually be the sign of internal pathology. I'm here to reveal it as your skin tell agent. Per usual, I received a consult request while I was in the office one day and I went in to see this patient after hours in the hospital. He was complaining of really within a very short period of time, seven to ten days, a very prominent rash that had arisen essentially all over his body. It had started in one area and kind of spread diffusely all over. When you walk into the room, I, I had to admit I was like uh, in, in a, a little bit haze. Because, you know, I, I was not feeling good when I came to the hospital. When I was consulted about it, you know, we get a lot of consults about itchy rashes. It could be one of 150 different things. So I didn't have a great inclination as to what was going on. But one thing that the requesting physician had mentioned was that the white blood cell count was pretty high. And oftentimes itching can be a sign of internal leukemia or lymphoma. It was striking when I walked into to see him. I mean, at the moment I laid eyes on him, I just knew right off the bat this was going to be an interesting case. It was very difficult uh, because uh, first, first of all, I, I, I started losing sleep. I was becoming weaker and weaker. You know, I had to go wash dishes. Uh, you know, it become a, a really, really hard for me just to do that simple thing. We proceeded with getting some additional tests, including skin biopsies. Uh, I got to learn a little bit about him. He was watching uh, basketball. It was the playoffs. He was watching NBA basketball in the room, and we chatted a little bit about that. And I learned that he was from the western part of Africa, Ivory Coast. You know, he, he loosened up a little bit, but you could tell he came from a position of feeling um, apprehensive, I think, about what was going on. You know, HTLV-1, this virus that actually really is only endemic in very few regions of the world the western coast of Africa being one of those sites. You know, it's one of those things you train to be able to pick up when you see it. And in my career, I had never yet ever seen a case of HTLV-1 associated leukemia in the skin. Have you heard of HIV? Yes. So HIV is a similar virus, but the difference between HIV and HTLV, which is what you have, is HIV makes those cells die. And so those patients that have HIV, they don't have that line of cells, so they become immunocompromised. HTLV, the virus you have, causes that same cell that dies with HIV as an infection, the virus that infects those cells. When HTLV infects the same cell, it makes it immortal. It lives forever. It's an eternal population of cells. I feel really shocked. I feel really shocked that uh, I could have a, a, a cancer, any type of cancer. I thought somehow uh, I was <laughs> somehow that I, I, I'm immune to to this kind of <laughs> this kind of thing. You know, it happened. All it happened to someone else. <laughs> now to add a layer of complexity to Ahmed's case. Um, you know, it's one thing to take care of a disease state, and it's a whole other thing to take care of a person. Um, Ahmed is homeless. He has a job, he works every day, and he can't afford housing. How does he get to and from appointments? Uh, what's gonna happen when he goes on chemotherapy? All of those things are running through my mind as I'm looking at this human that we wanna take care of. Thanks for joining us on this uh, Zoom you know, discussion today, Todd. Can you tell me a little bit about you know, what it is to be an expert in cancer? I, I think that one of the things that drew me to oncology was the personal connection that you're able to make with some patients and um, the impact you can have on people's lives. I'd love to hear your version of what it was like to kind of see this case. But when I first met him, I was just struck by how difficult it must be to, uh, to have this skin condition. 
And I, I was not sure at all whether this was a, a leukemia or lymphoma or something that, that we really could help with, or if this was some other dermatologic condition. I've never seen a case like this in, in my practice. Uh, again, this is a very rare uh, uh, type of T-cell uh, lymphoma and um, not one that we commonly encounter in the United States. I, f I feel way better. I feel way better. Zero be no itch, tens the worst itch. Got to say five. So it got about 50% better after your yeah. first set of chemo. Yes. Okay. Are you still there or do you feel like it's creeping back up? I feel it's going increase. It's, it's, it's not steady, it's jumping up and down. It's just going increment and decreasing. It's all about glitter and glam and pimple popping that you know people generally think about when they think about skin and how we take care of skin. And my message is the skin can be an amazing window into, it, it, it can be an our, our intel agent into what otherwise is going on in so many circumstances with disease. You know, sometimes you think about these patients and what they go through and it's hard. It's really hard not to be affected by it. Um, they're people, you know, just like us. They belong to someone. They have dreams. They have families. They want to get back to work like, you know, most of us would want to do. Find our sense of identity. My primary goal is to write. To write? Wow. Yes. To write like as an author? To write yeah, books? Yes. Wow, so that's your, your love, your passion for work, is to write. That's what I want to do. Okay. <laughs> you find delivering one in person signed? <laughs> you have a signed copy. I want a signed copy. You have time? I'll even pay for the copy. I just yeah. want a signed copy. That's okay, what I want. Okay, okay.